Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please click the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Seba, and today we're investigating robust standard errors this is the autocorrelation consistent covariance matrices, which are white and new in West procedures in EVUs 12. It's very easy to implement robust standard errors in EVUs, as easy as ticking a box, compared to how you need to multiply a bunch of matrices together in Excel. We've got videos for that, so check those out if you're interested in the matrix algebra fundamentals and in the Excel implementation of robust standard errors. But today we are cutting some corners and estimating them in EVUs. We have got our regression model, which is inflation regressed on unemployment and lagged inflation, which is the adaptive expectation form of the Phillips curve. And we might be concerned uh, with arbitrary heteroscedasticity here. Unlike weighted list squares, uh, that uh, treats pure heteroscedasticity and requires some strong presumptions uh, regarding what the form of heteroscedasticity is, robust standard errors, well, it's a name, do account for arbitrary heteroscedasticity structure. So, if we go estimate and select options, we'll be able to uh, change the covariance method. By default, it's ordinary, which is the OLS estimator of covariance, and we can see that those standard errors are exactly directly from OLS. And the easiest procedure we can implement is the Huber White standard errors, the classic um, sandwich estimator, which is robust to arbitrary heteroscedasticity. We can also select whether we do want the degrees of freedom adjustment, which uh, inflates the standard errors by the degrees of freedom reduction, by the n over n minus k minus 1 factor, basically. Let's leave it in and then experiment with it later. So if we enforce this correction, we'll see that our unemployment standard error, for example, is increased quite a bit, as well as the constant standard error, and that makes our unemployment coefficient now insignificant at 1%, but still significant at 5%. If we change the specification to remove the degrees of freedom adjustment, we'll see that those standard errors are now slightly smaller, and the p-values are slightly smaller as well reflecting the fact we have not inflated our standard errors for the degrees of freedom adjustment, but it's quite customary and advisable to leave that in because those results are more easily interpretable uh, from the perspective of degrees of freedom reduction. So we are here at our Huber White standard errors, but what if we want to also filter out the impact that autocorrelation might have on our standard errors? Again, it's very common uh, to interpret um, the assumption violation of serial correlation uh, in terms of the bias in coefficients, but it does also affect the um, estimator efficiency. It also does uh, affect the calculation of your standard errors quite naturally. For that, we can go to options and select the hack, which is heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation consistent standard errors, uh, developed by New in West in 1987. So if we click for the baseline uh, implementation of uh, the hack uh, standard errors, we'll see that the value for unemployment standard error has inflated again quite a bit. Now the uh, probability, the p-value, is only slightly below 5%, whereas the standard error for inflation stays very low, for lagged inflation, that is. We can also tweak the specification of the hack standard errors here, we can select hack options and pre-whiten our data with uh, a number of lags. So for example, we can select optimal number of lags based on Akaike, Schwartz, or Hannan Quinn information criteria. We can select a fixed number of lags. For example, pre-whiten our data with one lag, and let's see what it will do. That further has inflated the standard error for unemployment, and now it's only significant at 10% and insignificant at 5% we can select uh, automatic uh, number of lags based on the Kaike, and that would further inflate our standard error, showing that the assumptions about autocorrelation structure do indeed uh, play a major role 
in uh, the estimation of uh, standard error, the accurate estimation of that, that is. In this case, the negative coefficient on unemployment, which is the whole foundation of the Phillips curve, is barely significant at 10%. Uh, what also we can change is, if we're back to no pre-whitening, we're going to also select the kernel options for the uh, construction of the new and west covariance matrix. Right now, it selects the number of lags for the covariance matrix construction using uh, kernel theory, and uh, that is entirely based on the number of observations. However, we can select none as our kernel option, and let's see what it does. That makes our hack standard errors exactly equivalent to uh, Huber-White standard errors, as we have not selected any autocorrelation structure to be present when uh, we calculate the covariance matrix. However, we can select another option in terms of the kernel. Uh, by default, again, uh, it's uh, uh, the option that New and West used in their own paper. We can select um, some other kernel. There is a, a wide variety of them. Uh, for example, the Bowman kernel. And that gives us a slightly different result in terms of the estimations due to the fact that the covariance matrix has been specified slightly differently. It's uh, always uh, fun to play around with those assumptions in terms of the standard errors, however, sticking with the baseline, which is no pre-whitening lags, and uh, uh, the Bartlett kernel for the uh, original New Universe 1987 procedure is advisable because it's the most conventional method to use. Finally, we can also investigate uh, clustered standard errors, which would be clustered uh, according to the values of our observations. So we have got 167 observations after we lag one because we've got lagged inflation. So for example, if we cluster by unemployment, we'll have 144 clusters, depending on the unique values of the unemployment variable. This accounts for arbitrary heteroscedasticity form across uh, this variable, across unemployment. So it's not pure heteroscedasticity in the sense that we do not presume a functional form here, but we do presume that uh, our heteroscedasticity is related to a variable that we select for our cluster. We can also change that to be, let's say, inflation minus one, and that would cluster it by inflation observation. So there are 153 unique values of lagged inflation, which constructs 153 unique clusters and adjusts the standard errors accordingly. Again, this clustered um, form of estimation is more relevant when you have got, uh, for example, um, categorical variable, uh, where you've got a um, very small number of unique variables to form uh, uh, a meaningful number of clusters, and also in panel data applications, where you can cluster by year or by cross-section. In um, this um, uh, very simple uh, time series analysis, which we've got in our hand, clustered standard errors are not commonly used, and you generally resort to uh, Huber-White, or more commonly still, the baseline hack, heteroscedasticity is not correlation consistent standard errors. And that's all there is for the robust standard error implementation in EVUs 12. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I make to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics, or that much record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and send us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.